simple configurations like tunnels, pack files, proxy configurations, etc. You forward your traffic to the Zeeco, the global cloud. That's it. No hardware, no software. But this is all made possible by the largest direct cloud network available on the market today. Each of the over 100 Zens, or connection points around the world, is built from the ground up as a high-speed traffic inspection engine. Since you can also build personalized policies for individual users, service also needs to know exactly who's connecting. So we actually need to apply some authentication. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to be bothered by constant pop-ups or traffic interruptions. Authentication can be completely transparent and is supported in many different ways, including simple integration with your Active Directory or through the use of SAML single sign-on. Zscaler has many partnerships with leading cloud authentication services. So now you have an idea of how this works in principle. Let's take a look at how some of this works in practice. So this is the administrative user interface. It's broken up into a series of functional tabs, starting with secure. This is where you can set policies for inbound and outbound security from antivirus and anti-spyware malware protection level, but also includes advanced threats and including browser control. Manage for applying content filtering rules, compliance for data loss prevention rules, mobility to apply upload download controls and security for mobile devices, and then overall administration. I'm going to show you how easy it is to create a new policy rule. What I'm going to do is create a policy rule for category gambling. We can see there are already two policy rules, one for job and employment search category, and one which is an overall standard corporate level, block all of the things that you really should be blocking. I go into edit mode and add a rule. I'm going to have this apply just to the gambling category. I can pick just gambling. I need to go ahead and block this. And I want to apply this to everybody. It doesn't matter who you are. I could have this apply to individual users or active directory groups. Likewise, I can apply this to only people on the road, the road warriors, or from a particular location, such as a given office. So we're going to have it applied to everybody everywhere. Save this rule. And now activate now. Activate now literally pushes this rule to the cloud, meaning it's globally accessible to anybody on the Zscaler service for the very next click. So if anybody from now on goes ahead and tries to get to a gambling site, they will get blocked. So let's do some browsing activity. Here I'm on the Zscaler homepage. See, I can uh, click around, I can get to content, and it's just as fast as it would always be with or without the Zscaler service. Now, if you recall, we created a caution page for job search engines. So let's try and get to monster.com. Here I have a caution page, slightly different from an outright block, in that uh, the end user can actually click continue to go through to the actual content. The concept here is that the company is just making you aware that they are paying attention to this traffic, this activity, but it's allowing you to go there anyway. This caution page is completely customizable. You can change the verbiage, you can change the colors. You can even completely replace the page with uh, a company-specific one. So as I mentioned, you can just click through and continue on to the monster page. Let's try getting to something a little bit more sinister. Let's see if I can download something with malicious content in it. ICAR is an organization that does uh, virus and malware research, and they also provide test content that you can go ahead and attempt to download just to check that your tools and development are working correctly so that you can actually detect malicious content. So I'm going to pick a ICARB content, and here we can see that in this case, the browser is actually aware that this is malicious content. So it's gone ahead and blocked it for us as well. Now I might think that it's completely wrong, and I want to go ahead and attempt to download that content anyway, so I'm going to hit disregard and continue. Zscaler stepped in and still says, no way, you can't get that content. Again, this is a default page, completely customizable for your users. One thing I should point out is that this is actually a SSL content, so Zscaler is, in fact, inspecting that SSL content for malicious uh, activities as well. Remember that we just created that rule to block gambling sites? Let's go ahead and see if we've uh, uh, did that successfully. 
gambling.com. Nope, can't get to it. So I'm going to do two more tests that are slightly different. We're going to do some uh, DLP, some data loss prevention, and see if we can capture some uh, content that I really ought not to be sending out of the organization. So here I am in my uh, Outlook account. I'm going to create a new email, send something to myself. I'm going to attempt to attach a document which contains some credit card numbers and send them to myself. So here we can see that the content has been uh, blocked. I can't actually upload this file. I'm going to do one more test that's a uh, similar style, only I'm going to do this through my Box account. My box account, upload a file. I'm going to upload some C code, which uh, we have a rule that's blocking source code. Now, this might be proprietary to the organization. Take this file and upload it. And you can see this file is failing to upload. So let's try some activity on the iPad. Safari. Let's go to that gambling page to see how we get on from this. I'm being blocked on the iPad. So now I'm going to try and play a game. I know I've been blocked in the past, but I'm going to try again. The company has a policy against playing games. Let's see if I can get into Angry Birds. So here we can see that we've been blocked from playing Angry Birds uh, on the iPad. We can also see that I've already been blocked four times for the same reason. So it's still not letting me play much as I try. But let's take a look at the reporting aspects within the administration UI. The, from a dashboard level, which provides the first level of reporting, there are actually five different dashboards, uh, depending on the business function that you might be focusing on. So as it sounds, Web Overview gives a nice high level, uh, entire encompassing all act web activity. Browsing is literally just browsing activity specific to uh, general sites, but not the web applications or cloud applications, which would actually come under cloud apps. And then mobile activities as well. Now, all of these dashboards are completely customizable. You can turn these into a different look and feel, remove things. I don't want this widget. This one, I don't like it being a pie chart. I want it to be a bar chart, etc. And then you can save this for, for future reference. So just to come back to the web overview, change this to three days, fill it up with a bit more data. Here I can see that clearly uh, there's a rather large amount of streaming media activity. I can see who the top users are overall. I can see who the top URL, what the top URL categories are. I can also see there are some advanced threads, social networking aspects, and sort of a little bit more detail on the uh, uh, streaming media. Specifically, I can see that YouTube is clearly the vast majority of that traffic. So from this perspective, this could actually impact company business. If, uh, if this YouTube activity is consuming an enormous amount of the available bandwidth, then business critical applications might actually uh, be impacted. Salesforce.com, Office 365, etc., might come to a crawl, and that would actually impact the company's ability to do business. So I might actually want to uh, investigate this a little bit more. So one of the ways that I can do this is literally from here. I can go directly to the logs, but in this case, I want to sort of do a little bit more of an analytic approach. So I'm going to go into Analyze Charts. So I'm taken into Analytics and Web Insights, and I can start to play, essentially. So I can look at the uh, bytes I can, in terms of, uh, or turn it into transactions. Transactions doesn't look like it's a huge amount, but that's understandable. Not so many transactions is actually still generating an enormous amount of bandwidth use. I can determine that perhaps I don't like this uh, view. I'd like to turn it into a pie chart. You know what? That doesn't give me any better view. I'm going to go back to my bar chart. And I'd actually like to find out a little bit more specifics about this. So uh, I could actually find out what the locations are. Let's see perhaps who the users are. Let's find out who the top users are. Okay, Krishna and Sachin and Christina are clearly the major users, but by far Krishna is up at the top there. So potentially I might want to uh, take some corrective action. Maybe HR would like to take some corrective action. 
So you could do this in a number of different ways. Maybe I need to actually uh, create some policy rules to restrict the user's activity from a content perspective. Um, I also note that down at the bottom, we're actually collect collecting a history of transactions. So as you can see at this point, I've turned it into a bar chart. And all of this could be extracted into a report to give to HR to actually apply any uh, compliance type rules. So I can actually edit this if I'm not interested in a particular piece of this data. As part of my forensics, I can remove pieces. And then at the end of the day, go ahead and one of the other things I should potentially look at here is where was this um, bandwidth usage being consumed? So I can look up the locations for this, find out uh, which particular office or if he's in an office, and I can actually see that clearly he's not in one of the offices when he's doing this activity. So he's not consuming company resources specifically, so at least he's not impacting business, but potentially he's on business hours and spending too much time watching them. I can view this data in another way. So this I took down from the dashboard, but I can go directly to uh, interactive reports. And here we have a set of uh, fully predefined uh, reporting. Everything from mobile security to uh, interactive created any new components to this chart. So let's go ahead and edit this a little bit more. So I want to add a widget. I want the users involved. Get that user data. Users. And add filters that say I'm only interested in select class. Advanced threats are already there. Okay. I want to be much bigger. In the middle, save this report. I've just created a report that shows me the advanced threats that are, that are occurring for the previous week, and I also know which specific users they are. So this was actually added to my reports. These can be shared amongst other people. You can even export this uh, report as a JSON file and import it into another administration if you want. So this just gives you an idea of the power of drilling down into the data, creating reports on the fly or just using some of the standard already predefined reports. So let's take a look at some of the architecture behind the scenes. Zscaler Cloud is made up of many components, but the primary ones are the Zens or enforcement nodes. The Zens are the traffic inspection and enforcement points. They detect the malicious content and enforce the policy rules. The Nanolog, Transaction logs are stored in the analog. It's important to note that while Zscaler is inspecting the traffic content, it doesn't log that data. It's simply an entry that denotes who went where, when, and whether they were allowed to go there, whether there was, uh, anything malicious was detected and blocked. The final part is the CA, or central authority. CA is the true brains of the operation. Not only does it authenticate all users, but it uh, actually controls all of the update functions of the cloud. For example, um, when any signatures, etc., are updated, this is controlled by the CA. One of the biggest challenges we face is the sheer volume of data. A 
single user performing general browsing transactions actually generates an enormous number of transaction records. We have to store all of those records for that user. We have to store all of the records for all users. So with the number of users that we have currently, this is approximately 10 billion transactions per day. Now, not only do we actually have to go ahead and store that data, which is a big enough task in itself, but the really important part is being able to create reports from it. So we have to be able to drill down into those 10 billion transactions, find the ones that are relevant to you, create a report, extract that information for your users, for your queries, and bring it up in real time. These reports will be presentable to you within a few seconds of them being created in the first place, and a few more seconds just to pull them right out of the cloud. Zscaler applies security bidirectionally. We are inspecting both inbound and outbound directions. This means that not only do we block infections from viruses on the way in, but we prevent viruses from being propagated to other machines in the outbound flow. This bidirectional inspection also enables the detection of botnet activity at the traffic level, not just from the known command control center level. Of course, this bidirectional inspection also means that we can do um, data loss prevention type techniques. On top of this, Zscaler also monitors for out-of-date browsers and plugins. This is a proactive security step, since uh, many of the attack vectors these days are targeting older, more vulnerable versions of the browser and the plugin. One of the other elements is page risk index. This is a truly dynamic evaluation of the content. We're looking at every object on a page and accumulating a score as we go. This it turns into a risk tolerance. The organization will have set a risk tolerance, and if this page total adds up to above or below this tolerance level, then the content is going to be blocked or allowed accordingly. Lastly, attachments or executable components can be sandboxed for further behavioral analysis. These objects are allowed to execute in a safely restricted environment, and if we determine them to be malicious, then they are blocked for all users across the entire cloud immediately. None of these features and functions would be of any use if the user experience is painfully slow. These are going to provide the largest direct cloud network on the market today. This minimizes traffic backhauling and allows you to connect to a close node wherever you are for faster internet access. Additionally, this also provides a massively redundant architecture. Today's solutions need to align with today's reality, that everything corporate is going mobile. Social media and cloud-based tools are prevalent, and the old model of expecting a primitive device to always protect you is outdated. The right solution should provide advanced security, instant visibility, be flexible enough to support a growing organization, and be cost-effective. To learn more about Zscaler's direct cloud network, please visit our website at zscaler.com and find out why thousands of companies, including some of the largest global organizations, rely on Zscaler.